Question period, I recognize the Deputy Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, this tired and out-of-touch government is failing to deliver when it comes to the cost of living for Saskatchewan people. They're not listening. If they were, they would know that this is by far the number one issue for Saskatchewan people. New polling from Angus Reid today shows that cost of living is the number one issue for people and that 61 per cent of Saskatchewan people think this Premier is doing a bad job or a terrible job of managing the issue. When will the Sask Party finally cut the fuel tax, listen for once, and provide some cost of living relief? Recognize the Premier. I would advise the deputy leader, and maybe for her to advise the leader when she returns, Mr. Speaker, with respect to the fact that that, that exact poll also, also, Mr. Speaker, identified the Saskatchewan party as the party best in this province to address affordability concerns yeah. that Saskatchewan residents have. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, uh, most certainly, uh, that is what this party has done over the last 17 years, is address those very concerns by reducing taxes in the province of Saskatchewan, Mr. Speaker. In fact, removing 112,000 people off the tax rolls in this province yeah. altogether, Mr. Speaker. That's relative to the time under the members opposite when they had the honour to govern. Mr. Speaker, uh, there are over $2 billion, and I've said this numerous times in the floor, on the floor of this assembly, there are over $2 billion in each and every budget, Mr. Speaker, that are specifically in there to address affordability measures for families from corner to corner to corner in the province of Saskatchewan, Mr. Speaker. That includes up to that last year with the tax affordability checks, $500 that were set out to each and every family. That includes having some of the second the second lowest utility bundle in the nation of Canada, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, and I would say that as our economy in this province continues to strengthen, uh, you're going to see more investment into the classrooms in this province, into the health care in this province, Mr. Speaker, and most importantly, into the communities across the province. Recognize the Deputy Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, the poll shows that they're failing on cost of living, living and they're failing on health care. Two-thirds of people say that this government is failing on health care. It's clear in the polls and it's clear in the headlines, like this one today from CTV, quote, Woman robbed in Regina Hospital waiting room. People wow. waiting in a waiting room have enough to worry about with long wait times and health care, Mr. Speaker. Now they have to worry about their own safety? It's unacceptable. How did the minister let things get so bad in our ERs that people are now being held up at knife point? Recognize the premier. why you're seeing this government take a parallel approach when it comes to providing supports for those that may be struggling with mental health and addictions that often result, Mr. Speaker, in these kinds of violent activities, Mr. Speaker. And the other side of that approach is investing in our law enforcement agencies, Mr. Speaker, to ensure that those to ensure that those, Mr. Speaker, that are breaking the law in this province are being, are being caught and are be, being held to account, Mr. Speaker. That's why you've seen this province invest heavily in the RCMP, our municipal police services, aligning the provincial law, law services, Mr. Speaker, and the new investment, the new investment, Mr. Speaker, in the Saskatchewan Marshal Service, which is there to support those other law enforcement agencies, Mr. Speaker. They are going to build on and support the work of our warrant enforcement suppression team, Mr. Speaker. They are going to build on and work alongside our crime reduction teams in both the municipal and, and, and RCMP services, Mr. Speaker. And again, I would say through the, through the strength of our economy in this province. We are able to make those investments, and if you wait just a few more days, Mr. Speaker, there's going to be a budget delivered on the floor of this assembly, and I think you're going to see additional investments, not only in law enforcement in our communities, Mr. Speaker, but more broadly, substantial investments right directly into the communities where each Saskatchewan family lives. Recognize the deputy leader of the opposition. Mr. Speaker, they're not standing up for law enforcement. They're propping up a vanity project that they've created in this Marshall's force, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, people in Regina and Saskatoon have seen fire code violations in emergency rooms. And now, because of this tired and out-of-touch government's complete mismanagement of the health care system, we're seeing criminal code violations as well. This doesn't just impact patient safety. It's a workplace safety issue for health care workers. The Premier has been off in office for six years. This is his record. 
and it's time for a change. Will the Premier finally accept some responsibility for the state of our health care system under his watch? Recognize the Premier. It's over not only the last six years, but the last 17 years. Uh, you have seen a commitment by this government, Mr. Speaker, to uh, continue to foster the growth of our economy so that we can invest into those very, those very health care services that Saskatchewan people expect, to the tune of adding 1,000 doctors and over 5,000 nurses. Just this last year, Mr. Speaker, just this last year, over 960 Canadian graduate nurses have been hired by the Saskatchewan Health Authority. In addition to that, well, if they don't like the answer, Mr. Speaker. In addition to that, Mr. Speaker, through our international recruitment, over 450 folks from the Philippines have been offered services. I understand about 170 of them are already offering services in a Saskatchewan community, maybe near them, Mr. Speaker, maybe in, a, in, a, in another area of this province, Mr. Speaker. And I would remind members opposite because they, did never, they never did take this opportunity when they were in government. It is only through fostering the strength and the growth of the Saskatchewan economy that we're able to continue to make those investments into our classrooms, into our health care system, Mr. Speaker and into our communities more directly. Mr. Speaker, the Premier likes to talk about what's coming into the system, but he doesn't talk about the number of people who have left. Exactly. And under this Premier's watch, we've lost 474 rural registered nurses, Mr. Exactly. Speaker, in this province. This tired and out-of-touch government is failing health care in so many ways. Just one of them is the over-reliance on contract agency nurses. Yeah. Earlier this week, the Saskatchewan Union of Nurses released new numbers showing that the SAS party is on track to spend more than $70 million on contract agency nurses this year. Shame. Why is the SAS party spending tens of millions of public dollars on contract nurses when they should be fixing retention for nurses that live in Saskatchewan? <laughs> Recognize the Premier. Mr. Speaker, like many other provinces, we are investing to ensure that those services are delivered in our communities, Mr. Speaker. And, in do and alongside that, Mr. Speaker, investing heavily in hiring, and as per my last answer, over 1,300 nurses into our Saskatchewan Health Authority system, Mr. Speaker, servicing a community, Mr. Speaker, that many of us in this province represent. I, I find it interesting that the Deputy Leader talks about services and people that are leaving our system in our province, Mr. Speaker. When they had the opportunity to form government over 16 years, 22,000 people actually did this, did leave this province, Mr. Hey. Speaker. Saskatchewan's fastest growing city was Calgary, Mr. Speaker. That's, that's what our province looks like, looked like under the new democratic government, Mr. Speaker. Thankfully, in 2007, there was a change that was made. 223,000 people have moved into Saskatchewan or chosen to stay here, Mr. Speaker. No longer are our students, are our, our children getting luggage for a graduation present, Mr. Speaker. They're getting the graduate retention program to encourage them to find a job in the province of Saskatchewan, Mr. Speaker, to stay in a community that maybe they were raised or another Saskatchewan a community, Mr. Speaker, and to add to the opportunities that we will have for generations to come. No answer to the question, Mr. Speaker. Just falling back into the old fear-mongering statements, Mr. Speaker. This tired and out-of-touch government isn't being transparent at all when it comes to the costs of contract nursing. I asked the minister at committee for details on the total cost of these expensive nurse contracts and the names of the agencies being used. No answer. I followed up with the minister almost a month ago by letter. Still, no answer. The annual reports for the SHA show that payments of staffing agencies have ballooned from 1.4 million in 2020 to at least 25 million in 2022. Why won't the SASC party release some basic information about how much these costly nursing agencies are costing Saskatchewan people today? Recognize the Minister of Health. 
Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. And specific to the uh, to the member's question, I understand my office has been uh, trying to to reach out to to the member here uh, today, uh, Mr. Speaker. Um, I would say that uh, Saskatchewan, uh, like uh, other provinces, uh, uh, when necessary, is uh, utilizing contractor uh, co contract nurses uh, when uh, when it's required to stabilize services and deliver those services, uh, Mr. Speaker. And uh, we're working very closely with the SHA and our partners to make sure that uh, we are doing everything we can to to fill vacancies to make sure that we're permanently hiring hiring nurses in this province for and by creating a new uh, permanent full-time positions uh, in Saskatchewan. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I would say that uh, uh, currently 18,000 nurses of all designations call Saskatchewan home and are proud to be working in our health care system. We're very grateful for the work that they deliver in our province, Mr. Speaker. Uh, that number, 18,000 nurses in our province, uh, Mr. Speaker, that is an increase of 5,000 nurses net over the 2007 numbers, Mr. Speaker. Recognize a member from Regina University. Mr. Speaker, the good people from the Saskatchewan Association of Rural Municipalities are in town right now for their annual convention, and just minutes ago, our leader had the opportunity to speak to them and speak to them about all the opportunity that exists in rural Saskatchewan, especially economic opportunity, because under this tired and out of touch government, rural Saskatchewan isn't getting ahead. In fact, it's falling behind. Mr. Speaker, under this Premier's watch, from 2018 till 2023, 40,600 jobs have been lost in rural Saskatchewan. That's one in three jobs lost. How can the SAS Party defend the records of lost jobs in rural Saskatchewan? Here, here. Recognize the Minister of Trade and Export Development. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Brittany Rich from a party opposite, whose idea of rural economic development was telling people to go fix their own roads, Mr. <laughs> Speaker. The reality is that we have a strong economy and a bright future. The jobs report last week was incredibly positive, Mr. Speaker. Nearly 19,000 jobs that have been created, full time jobs created over the course of the last year. 20 a job every 28 minutes, Mr. Speaker. That means by the time question period is concluded, another job will have been created here in Saskatchewan. Many of those, Mr. Speaker, are in, uh, in rural Saskatchewan. And, you know, Mr. Speaker, I can speak to that being from rural Saskatchewan. The members on this side can speak being to rural Saskatchewan, as opposed to the members opposite who represent a grand total of zero rural municipalities uh, in Saskatchewan, Mr. Speaker. In addition to that, we have some very, very exciting news on growing the economy going forward. A great announcement on investment attraction, reflecting the fact that we are seeing remarkable record amounts of capital investment in the province, something that literally never happened under the NDP. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. This government likes to talk a good game about rural Saskatchewan, but the numbers don't lie, Mr. Speaker, and Saskatchewan people care more about results than they do about that minister's feel-good story, and the results are in. Mr. Speaker, 40,600 jobs lost in rural Saskatchewan, one in three since this premier came to office. How is that growth that works for everyone? Here, here. Recognize the Minister of Trade and Export Development. Uh, just another example, Mr. Speaker, constant negativity from the NDP, constant talking down of our economy, and constant, Mr. Speaker, not representing the fact that we are seeing tremendous, tremendous job growth here in this province, Mr. Speaker. Hot off the press is a uh, report from the Royal Bank of Canada, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I'm going to quote from a larger than anticipated capital expenditure boost last year. Just talked about that. And this is a quote and an astounding takeoff in the labour market has prompted an upward revision of our 2023 growth forecast, Mr. Speaker. That's from RBC just, uh, just yesterday afternoon that came out, a uh, reflection that we're seeing in a labour market creating 19,000 full-time jobs last year, seeing nearly $19 billion of capital investment coming into the province this year. This is what pays for everything else, Mr. Speaker. This was the part the NDP never did get and never will get, Mr. Speaker. The way you are able to pay for education, the way you are able to make record investments in health is by attracting investment that's recognize the member from Regina University Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. This is a government whose capital investment is 54% of what it was in 2014. Where is the now, Mr. Speaker? The economy
economy matters. As the famous saying goes, it's the economy, stupid. And Mr. Speaker, this tired an out-of-touch government is taking rural Saskatchewan for granted. 40,600 jobs, and all they need to do is look at the facts because it's not just jobs that they're losing, Mr. Speaker. Under this Premier's watch, since he came to office, 860 businesses have closed their doors Shame. in rural Saskatchewan. Mr. Speaker, how does this tired and out-of-touch government defend that Premier's record when it comes to nearly 1,000 businesses closing their doors for good? Trade well, Mr. Speaker, they want to talk about comparing records. I can't tell you how much I am happy to compare our record of 16 years in office versus their record of 16 years in office. It's a, it's a legitimate comparison, Mr. Speaker, one that that member invited the comparison to. Over their time in office, Mr. Speaker, how many people moved to Saskatchewan? The answer is zero. Actually, the answer is less than zero because 20,000 people left Saskatchewan during their 16 years in office. What is our record, Mr. Speaker? Over 220,000 people made Saskatchewan right. their home. What was their record on jobs, Mr. Speaker? Their record on jobs in the course of 16 years was not just zero, Mr. Speaker, it was negative. It was negative. They destroyed jobs and opportunity in this province over their 16 years. Over our 16 years, Mr. Speaker, we created nearly 100,000 new jobs in this province. And how did we do that, Mr. Speaker? By creating the conditions for investment to flow to this province, something that they have never understood. Recognize a member from Regina University. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. This is a government that refuses to talk about their own record. We talked about the record on health care yesterday. They didn't like that. We're talking about their failures in rural Saskatchewan today, and clearly they really don't like that. And it's a sign of how tired and out of touch this SAS party government has become. They've changed. This version of the government never admits when they've made a mistake. They'll never change tack. They'll never apologize, and they'll never change course. But, Mr. Speaker, it is the people of this province who are paying the price. 40,000 jobs lost in rural Saskatchewan, 1,000 small businesses closed. Those people do not care about spin. They care about results. And the results show that this government is taking rural Saskatchewan for granted. Why can't this government show an ounce of humility when it comes to their record of failure for rural Saskatchewan? Here, here. Recognize the Minister of Training Export Development. Well, Mr. Speaker, I, I think I canvassed the side by side records of the members opposite over their 16 years versus our 16 years, Mr. Friend Speaker. It's a record that we are very, very proud of, Mr. Speaker, on this Friend side of the House. And an economic record I am very comfortable putting to the people of this province because I know which side they're going to pick, Mr. Speaker. Another example of the things that we're doing just this week great positive news the Indigenous here, here. business gathering that was held in Saskatoon, uh, put on, attended, uh, and, and led by the Premier. Uh, Trade and Export Development, Mr. Speaker, was the organizers of the event. Incredibly positive, an incredibly optimistic and forward-looking uh, event that has uh, 85 uh, booths that were from Indigenous businesses, where we are seeing tremendous growth, Mr. Speaker, whether that be in the forestry sector that those members want to shut down, whether that be in the energy sector, which those members do not like, whether that uh, be in uranium mining, which we know that members, their official position is to shut it all down, Mr. Speaker. On this side of the House, we're going to continue to move forward on all of those fronts. We're going to continue to do that with our Indigenous people in this Recognize the member from Saskatoon Eastview. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is long past time for this tired and out of touch government to get a deal with Saskatchewan teachers. Yeah. It's time for that minister to stop playing games, to stop with the billboards, to stop with the Twitter videos, and to get a deal that, that addresses class size and complexity. Will the Minister of Education finally show some humility and sit down with teachers and get a deal done? Here, here. <laughs> Recognize the Minister of Education. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'll remind the members opposite of a couple things that we announced last week out of our government, Mr. Speaker. First of all, the largest ever increase to school operating funding that the province has ever seen, Mr. Okay. Speaker. $180 million distributed that will be distributed to our 27 school divisions all across the province, Mr. Speaker. These are locally elected people that are ultimately going to make some great decisions for how we support students and teachers in our classrooms, Mr. Right. Speaker. When it comes to the multi-year funding agreement, Mr. Speaker, that we signed last week with 
27 boards, Mr. Speaker. That's going to take the classroom supports funding and guarantee that <clears throat> as a minimum for the next four years, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, when it comes to bargaining, Mr. Speaker, we've offered a salary deal to the STF leadership that accounts for cost of living. We've offered the management of their own dental plan, Mr. Speaker. We've offered wording around violence in the workplace, Mr. Speaker. We have made offers, Mr. Speaker. It is time for the STF leadership to stop making excuses and get back to the table. That's what teachers, students, and families want in this process. Yeah. Recognize the member for Mr. Speaker, everyone knows that this Minister of Education is failing. He is failing teachers, he is failing boards, and he's certainly failing students and families. That's now that's clear from the people calling my office, and that's clear from the latest polls as well. 62% of Saskatchewan people think that this government is doing a bad job with their education systems. So here's an idea. Here's an idea. Will the minister look to what's worked in other provinces and pursue binding arbitration to get a deal done with Saskatchewan teachers? Here, here. Recognize the Minister of Education. Mr. Speaker, in my last answer, I outlined for the member opposite the several items where government has moved to make significant offers uh, towards the Saskatchewan Teachers Federation leadership, as well as the people of this province, Mr. Speaker. But, Mr. Speaker, when it comes to, bind, uh, to bargaining, Mr. Speaker, binding arbitration is not an option we're looking at, Mr. Speaker, and I'll tell you why. Because at the end of the day, Government Trustee Bargaining Committee has not even had the opportunity to have the Teachers Bargaining Committee at the table and discuss these issues. Government people, students, families across the province, Mr. Speaker, expect the teachers' union leadership to bargain for more than half an hour over a five-month period, Mr. Speaker. It is time for the Saskatchewan Teachers' Federation leadership to stop making excuses to stay on strike and come back to the bargaining table and start looking for solutions. Recognize the member from Saskatoon Eastview. Speaker, I would encourage that minister to give up with these empty talking points and get a deal done with teachers there at the top. Unfortunately, this tired and out of touch government only have themselves to blame for the impasse in education bargaining. They're the ones that have taken Saskatchewan from one of the top funders in the country in per student funding and dropped us to one of the last. They're the ones that have stripped local boards of their autonomy. And this minister is the one who refuses to get a deal done on class size and complexity. Instead, he's blaming teachers for wanting to be on strike. Enough is enough. Will the minister support getting a deal done with teachers through binding arbitration? Here, here. Recognize the Minister of Education. Mr. Speaker, I can't speak for that member opposite, but if he's going to refer to the largest ever increase in school operating funding and a significant multi year funding agreement, Mr. Speaker, that we have signed with all 27 school divisions as empty talking points for education, that's disappointing, Mr. Yeah. Speaker. These are real announcements, Mr. Speaker, that show that this government is serious about getting a deal done for teachers, students, and families. But, Mr. Speaker, when it comes to the topic of bargaining, I think the people of this province deserve a lot better than the Teachers' Bargaining Committee only coming to the bargaining table for half an hour over the last five months, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it is time. It is time for that union leadership to come back to the bargaining table, start looking for solutions. That's what we're trying to do, Mr. Speaker. We hope they'll come back. Recognize the member from Saskatoon, Mewasin. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. 74 lives have been lost due to overdoses in January and February of this year alone. 476 families lost loved ones to overdoses last year. This impacts families in every corner of our province, including my constituency. The government's decision to remove harm reduction supports and cut the things that will keep people alive is only going to lead to more lives lost to overdose. When, the Sa when will this SAS party government listen to those on the front lines and come up with a real evidence-based plan that will save lives and prevent those overdoses? Here, here. Here, here. Recognize the Minister of Mental Health and Addictions. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As I've said many times uh, and, and 
I will say again, uh, every loss of life due to an overdose is a tragedy in this province. And that is why our government is committed to helping people overcome their addictions by supporting recovery, Mr. Speaker, so that individuals can live healthy lives in recovery. And by doing that, Mr. Speaker, we will save lives, we will heal families, and we will strengthen communities in Saskatchewan. Mr. Speaker, no illicit drugs are safe. And that's a message that we need to get out to the public so that they understand that there is no safe consumption of an illicit drug, Mr. Speaker. The message that we are sending to the people of Saskatchewan, Mr. Speaker, is that there is hope in recovery and there is help available through treatment. And that's why, Mr. Speaker, we are creating more addictions treatment spaces. We are making it easier for people to access those spaces. And we are wrapping supports around them through recovery-oriented systems of care while they are in the system. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.